oh my god the blood of jesus set free a person in paganism from serving false gods to serve the one true living god and that's how he's making known to the rulers and principles and powers of darkness through the congregation because now you have changed are you seeing what's happening brethren this is so awesome i want you to think about your past god says remember your past Think about if you are Gentile uh, uh, source, think about your ancestors worshiping rock uh, uh, and the moon and the stars. Go all the way back, all, all the way back. We, 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 we worship ancestors. We did all things, all, all sorts of things. So now we begin to understand where God is calling us from by his grace. He is delivering the nations from idolatry. I'm going to say that again, and I want you to see the imagery of what is taking place here. God says, I am redeeming Israel, yes, but the mystery that I give my servant Shaul is to recognize that God is bringing the Gentiles from paganism into the kahal, into the congregation of God. And he's saying the, 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 the demonic forces could do nothing about it. This is so awesome, brethren, because what he's saying is that he's making a mockery of the demonic realm. This is what God is saying. They are there trying to keep the Gentiles in slavery. But God says, I sent my servant, the Apostle Paul, and he's bringing you out, out of Egypt, as it were, into the kingdom of God. And that's what we said it will be made known through the church. So the church needs to understand something as I preach, oh my God, and teach this unsearchable riches. When the church begins to recognize the Jewish component of the kahal, and we begin to operate in that unity and we begin to, to interact with each other and we begin to have that that that, that cross fertilization from jew and gentile and we we bring together the messiah in us onto the table and we recognize each other there's distinction there's unity then we're going to begin to see a mighty display of the power of god we are seeing it on a little level but god is saying there's more to come and Paul is wanting the Gentiles to understand this. And he wanted you today to understand this. That when God he said, he, he, the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the congregation to the rulers and authorities of heavenly places. Now you see what God is saying? When you understand the eternal purpose of God, that God wants to save you as a Jew, God wants to save you as a Gentile. And when he brings you out, hey, oh my God, this is awesome, brother. I, I, I ponder this over and over again. And I'm seeing... God is involved in universal restoration. This is a plan of God that he, he's taken over the world. This is not just about your little personal salvation. You know, you, know we, we, you have to see that you are token victory of God. Every Gentile that comes into the congregation is, a, is like a trophy of grace. It's God's token of victory that he brought you from darkness into his marvelous life. And Paul wants you to understand that. And as you understand that, he wants you to remove the hostility in your mind and now work together with your other fellow Jews who are coming out of religion into the kahal. So we're no longer just scattered stones, right? We're not just scattered stones. We are gathered together, but we're being formed into a temple. That's why I am so saddened and upset by what I'm seeing happening where, 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 where Gentiles are converting to Judaism. It's wrong, brethren. And where, 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 where Christians are forcing Jews to become Gentiles, that's wrong. We are missing the eternal purpose. What God is saying, Gentiles, be secure in your calling. I am calling you out. I can save you as you are. And when you begin to not feel that you have to go over on the other side, because if everybody becomes Jews, then where's the eternal purpose? The eternal purpose involves Jews as Jews and Gentiles as Gentiles. So if all become Gentiles, then the eternal purpose is, is not fulfilled. Are you seeing what's happening? That's why the enemy is trying to bring us in, into this camp where or everybody, you now make everybody Gentiles or in Judaism, make everybody Jews. But that's not the eternal purpose. And so God is saying, stand, withstand, and remain standing against the enemy who will try to, 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 to deceive you and bring you into that false understanding. And we're standing against religious spirits. But that's, that's behind a, a Jewish conversion. It's a religious spirit. It's an error. You don't understand the eternal purpose. And Paul is saying, that, I want you to understand this. Look at verse 13 when he says, listen, therefore I ask you not to lose heart at my tribulations on your behalf. I am in prison for you, Gen you Gentiles. 
I am in prison to ensure that the gospel comes to you and that you can begin to obey God in the power of the spirit. And he's warning you now what not to do. Go with me to the book of Deuteronomy. I want you to see this because I say it again. This is a struggle that, that, that is unfolding. The enemy will have known your eternal purpose. And in time, he's struggling to prevent you from coming to eternal salvation. All right? And if he can't stop you from accepting Yeshua as the Jewish Messiah, he's going to make your life ineffectual by casting doubt I wonder, do I, do I remain a Gentile? Do I have to convert to Judaism? And many are deceived by that lie, and you go over. That's a mockery, all right, of, of the calling of God. God said, I want to, 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 to mock the, 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 the rulers of darkness. And when you convert, you are not in accordance with my plan. I, I, I want you to see that, brethren. Oh, my father, help me. So in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 34 and 35. Look what God is saying here. Has any God hmm, ever tried to take for himself one nation out of another nation? Think about Gentile inclusion. Now we're talking about Israel, but think about Gentile inclusion also. All right? By testings, by miraculous signs and wonders, by war, by a mighty hand and out outstretched arm, or by great and awesome deeds, like all the things that the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your very eyes. You were shown these things so that you may know that the Lord is God. Beside him, there is no other. I want you to see that. God is saying, what I did for Israel is what I am repeating again and again. Oh, my God. I want you to take that text, brethren, and see it. All right? Because this, this, this is the act. God's act of taking Israelites out of Egypt is what is being replaced and replayed again and again. He's showing his, 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 his conquest over the gods. And what he's showing, listen, Israel was his tr trophy of victory, right? And he used the exodus to establish his name. So God said, now there's a greater exodus at work. Not only am I just calling out a, a little few mixed multitude, there is a bigger exodus coming. And the second exodus is the mystery of the Messiah. I want you to see that. So that when God is, is bringing Gentiles out, He's repeating the exodus from Egypt over and over again. Can I say that to you again, brethren? When God brings Gentiles out from paganism, he's repeating the exodus over and over again. It's as if he's telling Pharaoh, you can't stop the Israelites from leaving. He's telling the principalities, rulers, and powers of darkness, you can't stop the son or daughter from turning from polytheistic religion, turning from false religion to come to know they want to live in God so that they could be a come a part of the congregation and see themselves connected with Israel, serving the one true living God. That's what's happening right here now. And God is demonstrating his salvation and power in and through you and I. This is much bigger, brethren, than our little uh, personal salvation. you got to see the eternal purpose. So now I want you to consider this. Go with me to uh, the book of um, Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 49. I want to bring out this point also too. Isaiah 4, 49. And we want to look at what text is that? Isaiah 49, verse 6. Isaiah 49, verse 6 says this. It is too small a thing for you to be my servant, to restore the tribes of Jacob and to bring back those of Israel I have kept. I will also make you a light for the Gentiles, hmm, that you may bring my salvation to the ends of the earth. Are you seeing that? He's saying it is too small a thing. Restoring Israel is too small. That's wonderful and I need to do that, but that's too small. I am thinking universal. I'm particular and I'm universal at, at once. I'm God. So I'm going to work with Israel and restore them, but I want you to know that's too small for me. Israel is too small. So he's saying, my salvation must go to the ends of the earth. So the, the scope of Messiah is not just limited to Israel's restoration. It involves salvation to the nation. So imagine this now. Oh, my God. When I saw this picture, I said, Lord, my God, it blessed my heart. As if I saw a vision of, 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 of multitudes coming out of Africa, coming out of ancestral worship, coming out of demonic worship, coming out of witchcraft, multitudes, multitudes coming out multitudes coming out of China, multitudes coming out of India, multitudes coming out of Islam, multitudes coming out from all the other polytheistic religions. They're coming out, and the principalities, powers, and rulers of darkness can do nothing about it. 
because God is demonstrating through the congregation now his manifold wisdom to save a Jew as a Jew, as a mystery. And he's bringing Israel also to restoration. It's awesome. Now, God is a, a God who's very, very practical. So I was pondering over these scriptures. And then God says, okay, my son, I'm going to give you a practicum on this. And so he allowed me at this present time to be working with a young man whose God is bringing out. Hmm. This young man was offered up. Offered up to the, the goat worship. Demonic gods. And whose life would, would, would have been led along a certain path. And hearing the mystery of the gospel. God touched his heart. And God began to deliver him. Such that he would call me and said, Rob, I, I, I'm feeling like if crap holes are walking through my skin. I'm seeing them. I'm seeing them walking through me. And I understood that because Re Revelation tell us out of their mouth would come unclean spirits like frogs. So I understood what was happening when in the power of the gospel, those demonic spirits begin to turn up in him. But you know what? <laughs> the manifold wisdom of God was being made known. And the power of God was delivering this young man from paganism, from idolatry, to serve the one true living God. And now his heart is set on zeal. His heart is set on being transformed. He said, Rob, I never considered that these things were real. Thank you so much. He said, me, by God's grace, I, I understand that this is what God is doing. And this is just in the life of one young man. I ex expect to see that multiplied over millions of times. And are they putting up a fight? Yes, they're putting up a fight. They're not going to say, okay, nice, nice of you. No, 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 no. They're going to put up a fight. They're going to oppress. They're going to resist. But this young man is bent on understanding that I'm being set free. And he's fighting, not fighting for victory, but relishing the victory that he already now understands he has in Messiah. It's a big difference. We're not fighting for victory. We are registering the victory that's already there. And the principalities, powers, and rulers of darkness must leave. And that's what's happening. And brethren, I want to tell you this, brethren. When you and I, when you read the book of Ephesians now, and you see what Paul is saying, he starts in, in, in chapter 4, he says, therefore. In light of what was written in chapter 1, 2, 3, therefore. He said, live with all humility, gentleness, patient, and showing love for one another. And you may think, what's the connection? Well, this is what God is saying. Every time you and I now understand the eternal purpose of God, and begin to walk in humility, in patient forbearance. Every time we are not overcome by, by immaturity, it's the same thing God is doing in your life and my life. Are you understand what I'm saying? Now we're beginning to look at the other side of Ephesians, right? The practical part. And what I'm saying to us, when you and I now look with me, oh my God, help us, Father. Ephesians uh, chapter 4, verse 17. So this I say, affirm together with the Lord that you walk no longer just as the Gentiles also walk. What is he saying? You're still Gentiles, but don't walk as the Gentiles. What does he mean? Don't walk as the other unredeemed Ephesian Gentiles. Why? Because they walk in the futility of their mind. God is redeeming us from futility, brethren. Most of us are now coming to understand that what we are doing all our life was futile. It was vanity. It was striving after win. Futile living. Now we begin to understand eternal purpose. No longer futile. Continue now. Because they, once we were darkened in our understanding, excluded from the life of God, because of the ignorance that was in them, because of the hardness of their mind, and they have become callous, have become, give themselves over to sensuality and practice every kind of impurity with greediness. But you did not learn the Messiah in this way. What is he saying? You have an encounter with the Messiah. The Messiah has brought you out of Egypt, out of principalities, forces, and rulers of darkness, and now you cannot function like other people. Now you're understanding why you have to understand the eternal purpose. Because when God says to you now, you can't pursue that course of life. If you know Christ, you can't do that. Because if you continue to do that, you are showing that you are mocking what Messiah would have said and done. That's why you have to understand the eternal purpose. I have to not operate in, watch this now, Ephesians chapter um, 4, verse 28. He said, give no place to the devil and let him who steals, steal, steal no more. Why? Because I understand the eternal purpose. God is bringing me out of my Egypt of stealing to now being disciplined 
and working and giving to those who have need and giving to the house of God. Because giving tithes is just showing us that we are not thieves enough. When we keep our tithes, we're just still showing God that we are thieves. That's what, what, what it is. But now we, why? Because we don't want to get, we, we were robbing God of our tithes enough. No, you're robbing God of an opportunity to bless you. You're still thinking as a Gentile. You're still an, in a temporary purpose. That's why you feel you have to have it. But when you understand the eternal purpose, my God, you would release. Because if God could get it to you, he would get it through you. Or if, if, if he could get it through you, he would get it to you. He said, let him who stole, steal no more. Stop stealing God's money. You're no longer that Gentile. He's calling you out of Egypt. Banga sees no, no banga sees. God is God, sovereign. He is eternal. Do you think he could take care of you? Oh my God. Unwholesome words. Why can I not cuss this person out? I have no longer, I'm not that kind of Gentile anymore. The power of God is in me. And I have the, the, the principalities and powers are watching to see whether or not I will sanctify the name of God or profane the name of God. If I profane the name of God, then they say, yeah. He came out of Egypt, but we're still in him. We're still in him. But when you decide, I'm not going to speak that word, then they watch you. Watch you. What? Tell, not in your mouth. Tell them, tell them that, tell them that. You know, Messiah is in me. And he is watching me too. He's watching to see whether or not I will die rather than speak an unwholesome word because I understand the eternal purpose. Are you understand what I'm saying? When you live in accordance with the eternal purpose, your life will change. You can no longer hold be slander and clamor and anger and malice and bitterness. Why? Because that's the work of principalities, powers, and rulers of darkness. That's why you cannot do that. You have to live in accordance with the eternal purpose of God. That's why your marriage will begin to change. That's why you're, as a master, you begin to change. As, as children, you begin to change. Are you understanding now? I'm, I'm on this side now of Ephesians. And when you understand the eternal purpose, you'll recognize, oh my God. So you're telling me, chapter 5 now, immorality has to go because some principality, power, and rulers of darkness is needling me. They get involved in masturbation, pornography, adultery, incest, uh, and all, 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 all this. It's a, it's a principality behind that gave no place to the enemy, but be filled with the rock of Kodesh. Greed, you mean I, I can't eat as much as I want and I can't do what I want? No, because there's a principality power and darkness watching you and there's a Messiah watching you. Which one will have the ascendancy in your life? If you know the eternal purpose that you're called to be holy and blameless, the mystery of his will and your part in it, you would say, I can't do that. How can I sin against God? Are you beginning to see it, brethren? All right. And all you go, silly talk, foolish talk, outer talk, jesting, not giving thanks, all of that. The devil can't stop you from leaving Egypt, but he could hide within your life and continue to, to bite you because you have not given up everything. Oh my God, God is bringing us out of Egypt and he's bringing Egypt out of us. It's the same thing. Those the demonic powers, when they are contested, when they are challenged and they, are cha they have remained quiet for many years because why? Jews were fighting among themselves. And Gentiles were fighting among themselves, and, and Jews, Gentiles were fighting Jews. So it's hostility, it's open, open game for the enemy. But now the revelation of the gospel is coming where we recognize we have not learned the Messiah this way, and we have to show a tangible unity between Gentiles as Gentiles and Jews as Jews, living together to the power of the gospel because we understand the eternal purpose now. Now we begin to understand, oh my God, I can't be involved in witchcraft. Oh my God, I can't be involved in, in darkness. Oh my God, I have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh my God, I have to be singing. Oh my God, this is why I have to love my wife because there is a Messiah in me. Principalities, powers, and rulers of darkness are watching me. So I have to love her. Oh my God, why do you have to respect your husband? This is the mystery. Children, you have to understand now. You are not like other, other Gentile children. You're not pagan. You can't watch that show. You can't be on that internet. You can't be on that social media. You are not, unless you are just like other Gentiles. You're just unredeemed. And the enemy just have nothing to, to, he doesn't, he just has to leave you alone. But when you begin to turn and take a stand, he's coming at you. So I'm saying to us, brethren, I want us to begin to understand what God is doing here. It's an awesome work, and I'm praying, God, that we would begin to see it. I want us to reread the book of Ephesians, as it were, after supersessionism. 
Reread it as if you are reading, you are in the body of Messiah, and you recognize whether you're Jewish or Gentile, we are Echad, we are one. You're not harboring any thought about trying to be Jewish. That is foolishness. Remain in your calling. It's an it's a evil spirit, that a religious spirit that's telling you convert. And I'm saying to you as a servant of the living God, the mystery of God is that you call as a Gentile, remain as a Gentile. You call as a Jew, remain as a Jew. Hold the fort. Why? Because there's a cosmic drama. There's an eternal purpose at stake. And you're understanding it now. If everybody becomes Jews or if everybody becomes Gentiles, that's what the enemy wants. But give no place to the enemy. Give no place to the enemy. I'm saying on a, on a macro scale and on a micro scale. I can't be that way. Why? Because the Messiah is looking to see whether or not he's going to be formed in me or whether or not we're going to let the principalities, evil powers begin to say, Ray, 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 we have him still. We have, we have her still. We want to silence them. We want them to know the manifold mystery of God who could save us, the manifold wisdom of God that I could think differently. I could speak differently. I could be a different person. And they could look at me and say, oh my God, I lost him. And that's what we're doing. When we come out of that, it's that like they are losing territory. That's what Luke is telling us. You have to bind the strong man and then loose the people of God. That's what's happening. Every time you and I change and turn and fight the living and, and, and become like the living God. So there's a sign that I saw sometime time and it intrigued me. The sign says, keep looking down. I said, what? Keep looking down. You would always take a sign and say, keep looking up, keep looking up. But I understood what the writer, what, what the sign uh, was trying to communicate to me. Keep looking down. What does it mean by that? Well, where are you seated? <laughs> you are seated in heavenly places. So if you are seated in heavenly places, then keep looking down. You see, we have been fighting upwards. We have to learn to fight downwards. What do I mean by that? Since you are seated in heavenly places with the Messiah, Messiah ascended, you ascended with him, you're in heavenly places, keep looking down. You're looking down on principalities, powers, and rulers of that because you understand the eternal purpose of God and you understand the play. Because you have inside information and you understand the strategy. You know the play of the enemy long before. So you don't fall for that. Oh my God, help us to see it, right? So we have to fight downward. See, we live our earthly life. We, we sometimes, to, sorry, we should not live an earthly life with a view to heaven, but we must live a heavenly life with a view to earth. Can I say that again? We must not live an earthly life with a view towards going up to heaven. We must live a heavenly life with a view towards earth. This is the ultimate intention, brethren. God is showing us a, a, a panoramic unfolding of his purpose. I'm, I mean, I write that down. I say, Lord God, this is, this is so big. It is bigger than I am. I'm seeing that you're moving us from being man-centered to God-centered. It's about God. It's about God. It's about becoming the fullness of a statue. We are not just a collection of stones. We are gathered together to become a living temple. We are knitted together. We are, we, we, we are, there's more to together. The love of God is keeping us together. We are understanding what is taking place. Oh, my God. So we are beginning to see that there is a satanic conspiracy. You and I, you're not seeing this, but I'm seeing it by God's grace. There is an organized satanic conspiracy. Our parts are being blocked. This message is being blocked. But, but God said, listen, the word of God is, is not, 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 not um, in prison. It's going forth. All right? But there is a usurper to be displaced. What do I mean by that, brethren? This is a spiritual battle. I see how Paul says, we wrestle and then pray for me. He said, listen, it's not just Rav wrestling. No. It's we wrestling. We are in this together. But pray for your servant because now he's revealing the mystery. Enemy doesn't want us to know this. He wants us to think, okay, just go to church and everything is going to be okay. No, it's not about that. In this week's Torah portion, we see Jacob wrestling. Wrestling. Rest there. I will not let you go until you cha until or, 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 until you bless me. He said, What's your name? Jacob. And they said, Your name will no longer be Jacob, it will be called Israel. And after that, I see God still calling God, ja um, God call, calling Jacob Jacob. I said, I thought his name was changed. What why? You said no longer would your name be called Jacob, it would be Israel. So I'm thinking after that, I should only say Israel. But we see Jacob. Why? Because Jacob is like us. Abraham was sovereign, he just accepted God's will. Jacob is like us. We are wrestling, struggling with God. And before we could wrestle against principalities and powers, we have to wrestle with God. <laughs> we have to overcome ourselves with the help of God so that he could use us now to wrestle against principalities, powers, and rules of darkness. When you stop wrestling with yourself and you subdue and accept God's will, when you stop wrestling with people as if they are the problem and you, you begin to see God's sovereignty, 
and everything comes from God and you receive it as from God, now you're ready to wrestle with principalities, powers, and darkness. I think we read the scriptures, we wrestle not against principalities, and then we, we just we, we wrestle not and we stop right there. So we don't wrestle at all. And everything is just as is. We, the status quo is maintained, the mess we are in, right? But God is changing us, brethren. He's changing us. Now, as I close, I wanted to, to bring this home to us in a way I'm hoping that we could understand. More and more. I said, read Ephesians again, brethren. See the eternal purpose of God. Be fired up in your spirit about the eternal purpose of the mystery of God. See yourself working to bring together that unity of Jew and Gentile. That's at the center of it. I'm saying that this is what Paul said. Stop thinking about unity of all of the churches. That's wonderful. But if unity of the churches among the denomination doesn't involve a unity of Gentiles coming with Jews, then the enemy still has a place in us and he's still laughing at us because we're still falling short. But when every congregation begins to recognize, I may not see another Jew, but I'm praying for the peace of Jerusalem. I am open to, re- to do Passover. I'm open to, to the Shabbat and kosher and begin to understand the mystery of God. That God is not about telling me, don't do those things. He wants me to be able to do them in the calling in which he has called me. When I begin to understand that, then I'm ready for the eternal purpose of God. And I fear because I'm seeing what's happening. And there are many in the body of Messiah who don't see this eternal purpose. So we're trying all kinds of strategies. But until we come back to the eternal purpose, the mystery of God, Gentile inclusion as Gentiles, along with the Jewish people, then we fall in short. Of the eternal purpose of God. We are rejecting the purpose of God for our lives and we are not serving the purpose of God in our generation. So as I close, I want us to, to think about this, these paradigm shifts that must happen among us, brethren. This is a restoration. This is now living according to eternal purpose. One, <clears throat> we have to stop going to church, stop talking about going to church and start being the congregation of Messiah. That's the first one. Stop talking about going to church. We know now know it is congregation. It is the kahal, it's the assembly, it's the community. Stop talking about your going to church. If you're still talking about going to church, you're still bracing up the wall of division. You don't understand because you still think church has replaced Israel. Wrong language. You have to change the language and let the principalities, powers, and rulers of darkness know that you're making uh, known the manifold wisdom of God. So stop with paradigm shift, going to church, and being the congregation of Messiah. Next paradigm shift. Stop trying to, uh, to get converts and be focusing on raising up disciples. You don't just want converts to Christianity. I converted from Islam to Christianity. I converted from Hinduism. No, we don't want converts. We want disciples. And a disciple is striving to be like the master. That's the wisdom of God. We want to move away from information only to transformation also. We are in an information age and everybody wants information. Give me this new book. Give me this new thing. Plenty information, but no transformation. Oh my God. That's, uh, that's demonic. All right. We have to move from head only to, to heart and hand also. So you need to have the head knowledge, but it has to be translated into heart and hand also. We need to move from being a, 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 a classroom or should I say a Zoom only, all right, to also a lifestyle also, lifestyle also. We need to move from being knowledge-based. I just want knowledge to relationship-based. If you are unable to call a brother and sister and discuss the message, then all you've gotten is knowledge. The enemy has deceived you. You are ineffectual. Because you just get knowledge this Shabbat, and then you get knowledge the next Shabbat, and you're not calling another person and say, how are you implementing this? A paradigm shift. We have to be restored. We have to understand eternal purpose. We need to move from just functioning with human love to the love of God. Love of God covers a multitude of sin. A love of God is slow to anger. All those things, right? Not just human love, but how I feel, how she make me feel, and foolishness, all right? We need to move from this consumer mentality. I am in this for what I could get to a service mentality. So I want to go over those again because this is the eternal purpose of God. Again, number one, going, stop going to church to be in the congregation of Messiah. That's number one. Number two, paradigm shift from converts to disciples. 
from information only to transformation also. So you need information. Head knowledge only to heart and hand also. Classroom only to lifestyle also. Knowledge base to relationship base. Human love to God's love. Consumer mentality to service mentality. Oh, my brethren, this is the eternal purpose of God. And as I close, I pray, God, that we'll see, as this week's talk portion say, you look at what happened with, with Jacob's sons. They forced the, um, Hemo, which means mean donkey, to, 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 to be circumcised. Look how that ends up. That's a glimpse of how God has said, when you do it your way, it's not going to work. When you try to force people to be circumcised, become Jewish, it's not going to work. That's what God is telling us. Oh, my God. Listen. Know that God loves you as you are. Eternal purpose, he already detained, uh, said you're going to walk in holiness and blameless, right? That's your call. In time, he put you into one or two categories, Jew or Gentile, but then he said, I want you to move from one group into the third group, become part of the kahal. Now you're part of that kahal, you've got to work together now to let Messiah be formed you. Why? Because there's a manifold wisdom of God that God could save you and bring you into the congregation and transform your life that you can no stop thinking selfishly and, and self-centered let not those who wait upon you be put to shame through me god is transforming you as a gentile and as a jew he's transforming us so that we will become the kahal the congregation of the messiah that we will become the fullness of stature ephesians we will grow up not tossed to and fro because we recognize who we're fighting against and we recognize why they're fighting against us because they don't want us to come into this knowledge. So every time you and I change a habit, it's like leaving Egypt and God is saying, that's my manifold wisdom. You see what I'm doing? Did you consider my servant Job? That's what's happening every time you and I choose not to slander, not to steal, not to operate in filthiness. But I begin to love my wife, love, 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 love your husband, okay? You, you begin to see that's eternal purpose now coming into play in real time. And when you and I understand that, oh my God, it will be for a blessing. So as I close, brethren, I want to commend you to the grace of God. And I want to challenge you again to read the book of Ephesians. Please read the book of Ephesians and get that panoramic view of the eternal purpose of God. And see your little place in real time. And see what God is doing in your life. Read the book of Ephesians. Read chapter 1, 2, and 3. You may not understand everything, but read it and see how that part needs to now impact upon the other part. So that we are fleshing this thing out. And we're telling others about the mystery of the gospel. The eternal purpose of God. We're living in accordance with that. Everything we do now is with that eternal perspective in view. Everything that we do, we recognize. I want to read this text again for you as I close. So that the manifold wisdom of God might now, right now, in time, be made known. This is Ephesians 3.10. Be made known through the church. As I said before, it comes through the church and must come to the church. To the rulers and authorities in heavenly places. This is in accordance with the eternal purpose which he carried out in Messiah. In whom we have boldness and confident access through faith in him. Now you can understand why Paul says, I bow my knees because now I'm beginning to understand the enormity of this thing. And as I close, I want us to consider this. The atom in chemistry is very small. And Rutherford, a scientist, said, listen, words like tiny and small is too big to describe the atom. Because we are now dealing with dimensions that are very small. He said small and tiny, those words, are, are, are too big to describe the atom. In the same way, words like colossal, astronomical, magnificent, surpassing, is too small to describe Hamashiach in you, the hope of glory. When you begin to understand the eternal purpose, brethren, your life will never be the same. It will, it, 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 you, it, it will, my, your mind will be what you're thinking about when you're going to bed at night. And when you get up in the morning, oh my God, I am alive to fulfill the eternal purpose of God. Can you take that in? You think it's just about you going on your little job and clocking your car? It's the eternal purpose of God. That's in view. It's a cosmic drama. It's an eternal drama that is playing out here. 
And God said, you are part of it. Get it right. Pray for my people Israel. Pray for the nation to come out of idolatry. This is the manifold wisdom of God. And you're going to see it out of Africa. Oh my God, out of India, out of China, all these places. Out of a, a distorted understanding of Paul. Multitudes, multitudes coming together. And we're going to see that. What is said in Revelation chapter 7. I saw a multitude from every language, nation, and people. Why? Because they're coming out to stand with Israel. To become the congregation of the Messiah. The body of Messiah. And the principalities, rulers, and powers could do nothing about it. Hallelujah. To God be glory. Let us lift up our Messiah and silence the forces of evil because it's about the eternal purpose of God. Shalom, shalom, everyone. Thank you for sharing Kingdom Treasures, the enriching and equipping teaching ministry of Rav Angus Marichal. For more Hebraic insight, please visit our YouTube channel at Rav Angus Marichal or Facebook at Shikina Restoration Messianic Fellowship. Message us at srmf.tt at gmail.com. May you continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Master, Rabbi, and Savior, Yeshua the Messiah. The blessing of Adonai be upon you. We bless you in the name of Adonai. Grace and Shalom, shalom.